All right, g'day everyone and welcome to another episode of Aussie Tech Heads, episode 607 on the 25th of October 2018. And I'll tell you something for nothing, it's the first day of summer, I reckon. It was pretty hot here on the Goldie and uh, I think it might have been hot somewhere else. We'll find out in a second. Now, I'm Glenn. Thanks for tuning in. We've got a, we got a full house this week. I'll introduce you to these guys in a second, just after I tell you that we are brought to you by Aussie uh, ATH Web Hosting, which is Aussie Tech Heads Web Hosting. And you can get your web hosting for uh, on a shared server, SSD drives, uh, nice and fast uh, services and ping time. So if you're looking for a website and you need somewhere to host it, jump on there, athwebhosting.com.au. And also brought to you by startnewcompany.com.au. Register your company fast and easy and direct with ASIC so you, all you have to do is uh, I don't know if you're looking to go from a sole trader or a partnership to, and you want a PTY LTD search for the company name that you desire and click through fill out all the information and bang registered with ASIC all your information all your documents and your certificate and you walk out the front door ready to trade how good is that uh, so that's startnewcompany.com.au all right, so this week we have we've got a not a not a brand new face, but a, a, a face from from before. We've seen him before. And his name's Paul. How you going, Paul? Hey, Glenn. How you doing? Yeah, not too bad. What have you been up to? I've been uh, pretty pretty busy. Uh, Good. I'm getting ready for this Windows update that's coming out. I reckon that's yeah. going to uh, create a few problems, which right. we'll talk more about later. We'll get into that. And a bit. I've been getting getting a new phone, as you all know. Yes, yes. Well, we'll get you, we'll get into that in a sec. We'll bring the other two on. It's uh, Jordan. How you going, Jordan? I'm good, mate. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Not too bad. I'm always and... a bit late to say hello on my first hello, aren't I? Always. Oh, you just got so much going <laughs> on down there. Button. <laughs> watching watching the the bubbles in the beer subside. I know what's going on. I should say that Aussie Tech Heads is also proudly brought to you by uh, Jordan. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> on Facebook, yeah, yes, and uh, and so it's a Facebook streaming job that I have, isn't it? That's right. But we'll get bring Joe in so we can all have a big uh, chin wag about everything. Hey, Joe, how are you going? Yeah, good. Thanks, Ben. You saw? Yeah, not too bad. Hey, thanks, Joe. Yes, uh, yeah. So yeah, face, uh, Facebook. Yeah, Jordan, you do the Facebook each week. So if it wasn't for you, there'd be no Facebook live. So everyone can no. give Jordan a little clap. And when I take a night off, everyone goes, oh, yes. <laughs> Well, that's right, because there'll be, there'll be no Facebook Live. And the only reason is... Because uh, you've got too much to do? Well, that and I don't have the bandwidth, because I'm still on cable. Who would have thought? Cable. Uh, you know? So anyway... Um, I think it's almost time for you to move house, Glenn. No, no, NBN's coming. NBN's <laughs> coming. It's, uh, I think, January, somewhere between January and March for us. It was what, what, what year? Well, True. It was supposed to be, <laughs> yeah. It was supposed to. All of it was supposed to be finished by kind of 2019, wasn't it? Well, it was supposed Pretty to be thi this year, like uh, April this year. We're in, but then that's when they had the HFC uh, pullback. You know, they said stop everything, halt, 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 stop, do not proceed. And mm. so, yeah, then they pushed it back another year. So, but I'll tell you, we're right at the end of the rollout. But anyway, hopefully it'll Tony be worth it. had his way. He'd reckoned it would have been finished by 2019. Mm. I think it's more likely 2000. And 30 at the rate we're going but i sort of like i know a lot of people probably know a bit more about mbn than what i do but i've just uh i've learned a little bit over the last couple of weeks i guess and you probably already know all this but uh but uh, look i was I, I oversaw an install down in kingscliff which is probably about uh 45 minutes away from where i am and uh it hasn't actually installed yet they've got issues with uh i don't know they they can't determine what shop number is correct for the shop. So the Telstra guy went into the pit and he went, well, that's not shop three. And anyway, that's a long story. But anyway, uh, the guy was saying, you can't have your alarm. You can't you can't have your alarm on a second line because if the NBN goes down, apparently just everything goes down and nothing works. And you just think to yourself, well, you know, are we going backwards with this or what's going on? Mm. But um, look, he's installing the, tel they're getting a Telstra modem installed with a 4G backup. And I think that has to be the way to go, isn't it? Like if you got, you know, if you got FPOS facilities in your store, if the machine go, if the NBN goes down, you don't want to be just hung out to dry. So, um, well, you're right. What they say about the alarm and all that. I mean, that goes, that literally goes off. If your internet goes mm. off, your your connection to normal phone alarm systems and all sorts of things go off. Yeah. So what they're yeah, going to do? The phones are all over the NBN now as well. Oh, so. I know. I think it's 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 like a, it's a great step forward for the internet, but I, I get the feeling it's a bit of a step back, isn't it, for telephone? But uh, what they've got to do is with the alarm, they've got to get some uh, GSM gateway or something. So they've yeah. got to buy an old phone with a four G SIM, and then they're going to hook it into that. And if the alarm goes off, then it you know goes through the four G. 
But geez, I tell you, it's a bit of a ring around. Um, yeah, all right. So, uh, how, so Paul, you're up there in hot Toowoomba. Yep, in Toowoomba. Yeah, how's the weather up there? Hot. Well, I look out the window right now, and there's huge storm clouds rolling in. So, who knows? We might have uh, quite a rough one uh, a bit later on, or during the podcast. Yeah, right, right. Good, good. <laughs> we'll get get you busy, get you uh, get you off, and uh, yeah, away <laughs> after the podcast, <laughs> so you can go and hide under your bed. Uh, now, what you've got a uh, a new phone, same as what Jordan bought just recently. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, Xiaomi Mi. Oh, sorry, how do you how do you pronounce it? Xiaomi <laughs> Mi A two. Right. And did you get the right one or the 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 normal? No, nah, I got I got the the the, the dearer one, or you might call it better. I don't know because um, it's got I think faster processor, a little bit more size. I think camera's better. There's a few things which suited me. Uh, yeah. I didn't need it. Does it? This one in particular doesn't have a headphone jack. As you can see, I don't use wired headphones anyway. So no, because uh, you went for the light or the yeah. Uh, and and you know what, my boy loves it. He plays um, he plays like his life had minis and stuff like that. But he he swears the um, he he swears that the the Mi A two is so faster, so much faster than anything else he's got that he nice. plays games on. Yeah. He loves it. Well, boy, I don't. Yeah, sorry, Paul. I, I don't. I don't believe that the the Mi A two. Um, it's not necessarily a better phone than other ones out there, but I think it's the best value for money at oh, uh, by far four hundred dollars. Mm. This is Android One. See, all of my clients, uh, or a lot of my clients, use Android One, and if you've got consistency. It's much easier to help them when you can mirror what they're doing on their device. Yeah. So the only little problem I've come across, or well, another little problem other than that hotspot, was uh, the the uh, selfie camera is mirrored. I can't turn the mirroring off. So uh, I wanted to take a photo of myself with a particular mug that I've got, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I, t- I tested that. I tested that, you know, on uh, with your your particular mug. Yeah, I, I came I out t- back I to tested front, that and it wasn't that wasn't an issue. I tested on mine. I, I was able to turn mirror on and off for the front. Right. Okay. Which one's the front? That, that's a back camera, right? On, on the that'd be back. the back. Yeah. The um, other one. I tested it. Uh, with, with the problem you had, and I was able to turn mirror on and off, whereas you say you can't. Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe the launcher's got something to do with it. I don't know, but I've got that Nova launcher, which is oh, yeah, pretty yeah, cool. Well, if you Thank God you got the Apple one off, because that would destroy it. Yeah, I think it was making it slow. So, yeah, um, that's obvious. Yeah, well, yeah, they could have fined you for that. Oh, I don't give a crap. It's as if. <laughs> they, they put it with a tut 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 Fine you for making your phone slow. Yeah, um, but yeah, yeah well, sorry, that's good. That, that, that problem did I tested on the clients? Oh, actually, no, sorry, I tested on mine, it was fine. Haven't tested on the other Mi A ones at this stage. Now, the other benchmark sorry. of the quality of these phones, and Jordan might be able to answer this one, is that I was uh, reliably informed by my daughter that the Mi A1 is the one of the only phones on the list that will not do Fortnite. So I'm wondering, has has your Mi A2 downloaded and played Fortnite, Jordan? Would you believe it? I don't use the phone, for starters. And secondly, my boy, would you believe it doesn't like Fortnite? Oh, really? He must happy, be the only I'm one in Australia. <laughs> the only I've one. Only had, I've only had mine for 12 hours. Right. Oh, 20, 20. But I should say, you know, we should mention, just for the listeners out there, that... We changed for those who are trying to hotspot that may have Xiaomi phones. We changed the Xiaomi. You now I'm saying it wrong. Xiaomi phones. We changed the APN type, oh, yeah. didn't we, to fix the hotspot? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Do you comma do you in comma d to in? Uh, yeah, comma d you in to the last tag. I think it was default comma supply or s s u p l comma d u n. Mm. Yeah. So, but but then and I'll that just fix the hotspot for anybody else that might be having that problem. But I was just saying uh, to. To the guys, Jordan, before you came on, that surprisingly enough, my daughter's MA one uh, didn't have the. She came home and said, "I oh, she hotspotted the other day, and I didn't even do anything to it." So, so what? What, what uh, service provider is she with? Yeah, she was with Vodafone. She went with. We got a year. Well, see, Vodafone, I only just discovered the other day. I didn't even know they're on, they've got their own network. That's no, right. I, well, Optus just bought them out. Yeah, but it's still their own towers, isn't it? I think they're. Oh yeah. Well, Optus now owns the towers. So they may have slightly different configurations to how Telstra have it. Like Geelong, for example, is on the is on the Telstra network. So maybe the, the settings there, you know, I mean, when you yeah, did the knows? LD one and you said yeah. you had problems with those, um, doesn't LD use the Telstra network as well? Yes. 
Yes, that's right. So it's probably likely that those APN type settings, mm. whatever they are, are probably partly to do with Telstra. Mm. Maybe with Vodafone, they're different. Yeah. Do you know anything about APN settings, Joe? Are you across APNs? Uh, Only- a little bit, but uh, but the Telstra, uh, but the Vodafone and Optus, I don't, I don't know whether Optus actually bought Vodafone, but I do know that they share the same towers. They have a an agreement that they share the same towers. Okay. Well, in that case, maybe the Optus, if you're on the Xiaomi phone with Optus, you may not have that problem with the, mm. with the done settings. Yeah, but anyway, that's uh, that's the go with the Xiaomi. So they're, they're making inroads everywhere, at least yeah. at least four up in Queensland and <laughs> at least one down there in Victoria. Mm. Well, I've got three alone. I've got three three clients. I've got the, M, uh, the A1 and I've got an A2 and I'll be rolling more out. Mm. Yeah, right. All right. Good stuff. Now, look, we'll get to some emails from uh, that we received through the week. Now, just one from actually the last week that I didn't get to was uh, from Shane when he was he was listening to, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And we're talking about, you know, those gold phone numbers that you can buy, the gold, silver and bronze numbers, the you know, the, the phone numbers with the triples in them and the doubles. Oh, yeah. I talked about those a couple of weeks ago. That's right, yeah. So Shane, he's uh, just the premium numbers, that's right. He said, hi guys, just thought I would provide you with some history regarding premium numbers. Back in the 90s, before digital mobiles came along, numbers were allocated by the carriers manually. The industry regulator decided that the analog numbers would be allocated as follows. So Optus 011, um, whatever, 012, whatever, 013, whatever. And it went on Vodafone, 014, 015, 016, Telstra, 017, 018, 019. It did make things easier back before porting was impossible because you knew, you know, what, what number people were. And especially back then when you had to go, oh, you know, you can ring Telstra to Telstra for free or Telstra to or Optus Optus for free. You could pretty much work out what was going on. When, uh, when digital arrived, the analog numbers were converted to digital and a four was added. So, uh, example was 018 uh, became 0418. Uh, the concept of premium numbers was introduced around this time. It may have been before digital. One of the perks of allocating phone numbers manually and working for Telstra Mobile Net at the time meant we could assign a premium number to ourselves for free. Oh, wow. I wonder if you did that, Shane. You could have kept a real beauty. Sold it off for $1,000. It was t- some time later that numbers could be transferred between carriers. Initially, people had to get different numbers if they changed Telstra and Optus. That's right. So thanks, Shane. That's a bit of a history of those. Uh, yeah, so that was the premium numbers. I think we were talking about they were c- costing up to like $200 or more if you had a nice one with a lot of triples and doubles and whatever. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, there's another email. Oh, yeah, just uh, to let you know, and a big shout-out to all, everyone listening at the Sheffield College in Sheffield, South Yorkshire, and the University of Sheffield Internet Cafe. Hello. How you doing? Uh, we're apparently streaming there now over the internet radio. So, uh, yeah, good to be on, good to be in your ears. How's, good stuff. <laughs> all right, hope you enjoy the show. So we actually, right, we're live right now at this second. No, not live, just rebroadcast. Are you doing the podcast as rebroadcasted, right? Yes, yep. So um, so hello whenever you hear it. How are you yeah. going? And study hard. Now, uh, let's get into some stories. Not any harder than Glenn, though. I studied pretty hard. Well, I didn't go to uni. So, yeah, <laughs> study harder than that. <laughs> um, let's get into some stories. A bit of a... Bit of an empty. Can I just before you before you cut in? Mm. Was there any comment? I'm just cutting in before you get carried away. Was there any comments on uh, our show ending last week? Not that I received. No, but no, probably. Joe and I had such a such a great finish without you there for a minute, and had to, then we doubled up and. Yeah, yeah, I think I passed a comment. That was about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I must have done all right then, there, Jordan. So just watch the temperature on you. Yeah, we must have just watched the temperature on your computer tonight, Glenn. Make sure that it's, at, yeah. uh, it's not overheating with all that hard work you've got going on there. Oh, I know. I don't know what went on last week, but uh, it was an overheating issue. And I know I do have to clean it. I'll have to get in and yeah, I'm going to do dust, it last week. Dust it out. But it seemed to be. It seemed to just go on. So I've got the aircon on this week. So hopefully that you know. <laughs> That might, that, might, might help. that might help a little bit. But anyway, I've, I do have to, every now and then, i just got to blow the dust out of it. So um, I'll get around to that. If it happens again this week, I'm definitely have to do it. Uh, but yeah, so no, that was all good. This week, there's too many of us on this week, you know. That's right. We, it's, still, it's, don't, we still don't know the intros and outros. So yeah, and it, it's, uh, yeah, Zoom is working in fact very hard. It's mega hot. Uh, look, I was gonna yeah, gonna say about stories and stuff. Look, there's hardly anything going on this week. It was very, very poor uh, for st- interesting stories. Anyway, there's a lot of you know stories like uh, 
CEOs going here, going there, and it's all rubbish. So I just leave those ones alone. But I'll tell you, one that's sort of maybe of interest, and if you're looking for uh, Macs or iPads for Christmas, don't buy just yet. Apple may unveil new ones uh, later this month. They've announced a second uh, spring product event. That's for 30th of October. So reports have said that Apple plans to unveil an 11-inch iPad Pro, presumably taking the place of the existing 10 and a half. Uh, the extra half an inch makes all the difference, so I've been told. And uh, alongside, yeah, alongside the upgraded 12.9 inch iPad Pro. There you are. Okay, there you go. Um, no one hears Apple, so probably no comments on all of that. Might be right. Don't care. What about um, what about on Facebook? I went down to Rabina and had a look at that new Apple store. Um, you know they you know they go on about the new look and everything. It's it's quite big. Uh, it's uh, like it's a very big store. It's probably not as it's not a deep store. They've got a big video screen. I saw them doing some uh, some learning, some teachings, and all that, some tutorials. Um, it's sort of uh, I don't know. I, I didn't quite like it as much as the old one. I like I like the the, the long store rather than the the shallow store. Uh, like long in you know you walk in and keep walking right down the back. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, security guards out the front. That's a, that was something new. And, yeah, I just didn't, I wasn't feeling it in these, I didn't feel as welcoming for some reason. It was a bit more, it was too clinical, it was too much, too much of it, too, too Maybe much. Maybe that's because you jump to the dark side on the Android and they, and they know that. Oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. that They've squirted something in the air for Android users, you know, to um to keep them away. That's probably what they've done. But, yeah, anyway, that's just my thoughts. So that's, you know, obviously, I don't know, took them to spend a bit of money on it. Uh, yeah, so what else have we got? Joe, you'd have, you'd have some stories this week. Where did your meanderings yeah, take you? I've got an Apple story here. Um, apparently, um, Apple have uh, blocked the police iPhone hacking tool. Right. Uh, yeah. You know how um, Apple usually uh, has has turned the, the grey key hacking device used by the police in an expensive to make a, an expensive doorstop? Apparently, the release of the iOS 12 has made it much harder for Great Key's ability to unlock an iPhone. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so law enforcement agencies around the world have been using Great Key to um, break into locked iPhones for a couple of years now, but it appears Apple has finally gotten ahead of the hacking device, well, at least for the moment. This tool apparently is uh, US $15,000 and made by this company. Um, and after Apple have fixed it, um, it's only capable now of um, extracting some data, um, unencrypted files and some metadata, which is virtually worthless to any anyone that, that, that gets that information. Mm. Um, for people who don't know, Great Tool, the Great Keys tool uses a workaround to brute force its way in um, an iPhone by guessing the user's password until it gets it right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so Apple has protection in place now to stop that kind of thing from happening. Right. So they must have sort of done something, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe can they, I don't know, how would they do that? Turn the device off or, or do something after so many bad attempts or just yeah, put it into some sort of real deep shutdown mode or something? Yeah, what they do is they have, um, if you, you'll need to have um, iOS 12 installed. So you have to update, update to iOS 12. And if you want to protect yourself, you go to the oh, settings right. and then the face ID, yep. passcode, and you scroll down to the bottom of the page and then disable USB accessories. Um, that, that there sort of helps stop people from getting into your phone. That makes it a lot harder. Mm. There's also added another feature there that says that um, after 10 attempts of the password being um, wrong, it then wipes your phone. It erases the data. So there's a feature called erase the data feature so that after 10 failed passcode attempts, yep. it will erase all the iPhone's data. Yeah, and that's probably the, the trick to this little grey box, isn't it? Like if you had that turned on, if it's brute forcing, then yeah, after 10, the phone just goes, hang on, see you later. And uh, yeah. Yeah, but what, would you actually have that feature turned on? I mean, what happens if some kid plays with your phone and, and all of a sudden it tries to get into it and then 10 times later, then it... It raises your data. I mean, I think, yeah, look, if you're, you know, like, I, I guess like, well, I certainly don't have any information on phones that may be that sensitive. 
uh, maybe you know certain companies around the world, maybe you have sensitive data. I don't know politicians, maybe whatever. Uh, so I guess you'd ha- you'd have to be if you're going to turn that feature on, you'd have to be thinking to yourself, okay, this is my phone has to back up every night, you know, to the cloud or something. So if it erases, and then you know it's a bit of a pain in the bum, but I suppose just plug it in and you know it doesn't take too much to restore it. Uh, yeah, if- the backup the backup would um, very likely be save you. Yes, you'd have. Yeah, I think if you're turning that feature onto a race after ten bad attempts, uh, then you pretty much need to make sure you're packing up every time, every night at least. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I guess um, a disabling the USB accessories is probably a good thing as well too. Mm. I mean, you, you've got access to the phone anyway, so if you want to, you know, use it for whatever reason um, via the USB cable to get into the car, to the phone, you can. Yes. Um, re-enable it, I guess. But when it says uh, disable the USB accessories, like the the iPhone doesn't have a USB port, so it, do they mean the yeah yeah Lightning port is USB? It uses USB oh, okay. to, uh, signal. Right. Okay. Right. 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 Okay. I'll I'll let it pass then. So yeah, it's just a just looks different, but it's not actually a USB like mini micro USB mm. port, but it, it is still a USB connection. Just different form factor. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, yes, okay, so, uh, yeah, if you've got some sensitive data or pictures, you want to make sure you, you do that then. Yeah, interesting. But I, I guess, I don't know, you know I, I guess once this box came out, like Apple really couldn't just let let it go, could they? They couldn't just go, okay, well, this box is out, like, go, go and hack, hack away. Uh, so the device costs, what, 15000 so that's about 20, 21000 our money. And... Obviously, you know, people would pay that to maybe gain secrets, you know, um, proprietary secrets of, of competing companies or something. So they but, may... right, but if anyone's upgraded to the iOS 12, um, that device is practically useless to them now. Mm. I think, look, at the end of the day, I reckon that, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, the, the, they'll give the coppers what they want anyway. So um, this could all just be, you know, a front just to make, the, 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 to make out that they're doing the right thing. All right. This process, this process will always be a revolving door, in my opinion. Uh, it'll, mm. the, the, the hackers will get something, then there, there'll always be a, a, a fix for every uh, change that's made. Yeah, well, I was talking to someone the other day. I forget who that was. Um, oh, it might have been Tim. Though I think he, he might be. He listens to us most weeks. Uh, talking about pirating and piracy, and the, there was a story about the you know the the government's getting tougher on piracy and wanting to shut down and you know get Google to stop searching and displaying pirate uh, sites results and all this sort of stuff. But I mean, and I think we've gone through all this you know numerous times. But that, you will never stop it. Like even if you know when you was a kid, you were taping the things off the radio, you know, with a cassette recorder and. And I was saying just the other day, like, you know, 10 years ago, everyone was swapping hard drives that had the movies on them. You know, someone would burn the DVD to, to the hard drive, then give the hard drive to the next person. They'd burn whatever their DVDs they were or copy more movies to this hard drive. By the time it got round to you, there was, back there, were 200 gig worth of movies and files on the thing. You won't stop it. You won't stop it. But, but as I said, you know, if you don't uh, go after and try and protect your copyright, well, you lose it. So I guess, you know, got to go through the, through the hoops, jump through the hoops, I guess. Um, Paul, what sort of stories interest you? Let's have a go at see what okay. you like. Okay, let me just get, get up here. I've got a couple of stories about the, uh, the uh, Pixel 3. Um, more so about the shortcomings or uh, some issues with them, which they're having. Uh, so, yeah, first one is uh, Google reportedly vows Pixel 3 camera will work properly for everyone soon. Now, this is a longish article. I won't read the whole thing. A pernicious, whatever that word is, a pernicious bug has uh, struck some Pixel, Pixel 3 devices, leaving smartphone photographers missing many of the images they take uh, no. per Android police. A fix for Google's latest smartphone is on the way. While we found photos taken with the Pixel 3 to be mighty appealing. We have also been fortunate enough to not run into the bug that has left many rumblings on social media. Uh, uh, Precarious. So so it looks like the bug... Periodically, 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 photos taken with the phone simply won't save, uh, won't save for some users. 
Now, reading on, it just this is um, a bit of a another revolving door. Uh, they bring out a new product. They obviously bought it out too fast, didn't test it, and now they're scrambling to try and uh, make a get a fix for it. Bad luck if you backed your photos up to Windows 10 and then updated it with 1809. You didn't yeah, as long you... as you're not using Windows or Android or Apple yes. or uh, Linux or uh, anything, you're fine. You should be right. Yeah, so that's a print everything. That's a terrible bug. That's um, yeah, yeah. So, so um, that that's that was uh, with that one. Now, did you want me to go on to the next one, or come back to the the second one following that? I will come back to the next one. I was just reading through on through that article. They said that Google said that they'll be rolling out a software update in the coming weeks, uh, and if you find yourself with a camera app that unexpectedly quits after a photo is taken, it might be a good idea to manually close other applications on the device. Well, that's terrible. Android. Yeah, they said, yeah that's right. I read whether, I don't know whether it's in this some article or not, but, oh, yeah, an Android application shutting down suddenly is a common indication of RAM shortage or a failure of the phone's OS to uh, manage memory appropriately, which is why many other Android phone uh, Android phones have run into issues, including all the earlier Pixels, the Nexus 5, and the and a wide range of budget devices. Mm. I wonder if that's going to be the case for the Android One uh, range. Yeah, well, my my phone, which has got Android One, the Mi A1, that sort of uh, that that crashes every now and then, and sometimes it'll just sort of go slow, and you can just think, oh yeah, it's just trying to compute something. It'll pick it up in a second, and it does, uh, but yeah, I don't know. The thing was I've just, I've just come off the back end of uh, two days ago of uh, using a Google Nexus 6P, and it's served me very well for years, other than breaking screens and batteries dying. Uh, it generally served me well, but it just got slower and slower. And mm. uh, occasionally, towards the end there, I just get apps would just close and say, this program stopped working, or right. do you want to wait? You know, all, all the usual stuff. But I got, I got a couple, of, two or three or four years out of it. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, Jordan, what what have you got on your little edge machine? Did you sync your stories up? No, no. <laughs> you know, it's funny tonight because, you know, last week, I don't know if people remember last week, I um, I, I lost lost the Facebook feed and couldn't stop it. Was it last oh, week? Oh, that's right. Before? Oh, the week before. Yeah, that's right. What In was the it? last couple of weeks, I've been using Chrome. So, ah, right. And tonight, guess what's happened? Uh, well, I'll tell you... I've lost the Facebook feed again. <laughs> so, oh, no. And I'm using no. Google Chrome. Well, I had a... I need to go back to Edge because I knew that it was always there when I needed it. Well, I was using uh, Chrome just before we started the show, or, you know, today. And I'm thinking, geez, you're slow, you sluggish little thing. I'm thinking, I must have to restart this or something, restart the computer. So I did I did a restart and the thing was slow. I looked at the task manager and there's like 30 Google things going. I'm thinking, what's all this? And that each uh, each of the uh, extensions, the add-ons, they were all listed as in the task manager. So I, did, I removed a couple of those. And I'll tell you what uh, sped it up a little bit was I went in and went, I wonder if there's an update. So I went in, did it, and there was, did an update, and it sort of gave it a bit of a kick in the guts. So maybe you could try that. If well, I could give my you know, two I remember, two I remember there was a story we read a couple of weeks ago, something about Google Chrome updating to to be more secure about, and and we discussed about how, how much RAM Edge uses and how much RAM Google uses and how Google were trying to prevent mm. hackers from getting from tab to tab and all that. That's I don't right. know if you remember that. Yep. Um, I think we were discussing how Google was changed, was taking on that kind of same yeah, thing. I, I that remember, does. Yeah, mm. I remember that story. It was um, they were talking about um, doing an update in the next version, where you can actually turn that feature on or off if you wanted to. And they were saying it was it would cause the browser to be a smidgen slower. But yeah, I oh, know this was my, this was chugging. But anyway, the update fixed it. Did it? I for reckon me. they've changed something. But yeah, mm. I'll, I'll, I'll try and update it. I tried just want to put in my two bob there. Um, Microsoft Edge, I reckon, watch that space. My current, the current leader of browsers out there is Google Chrome by far, but I reckon Edge is slowly going to make inroads and I'm not dismissing it at any point in time soon. No, uh, you're right. When when the Chrome got a bit slow, you know, I, I sort of went, I opened Edge up because I thought you, you, are a, you are a pretty fast little thing. So, you know, I think if you can get more extensions for it, yeah, it could become... The extensions are there. They are there. Yeah, There's a few. They're, they're the main ones a lot. that you need, yeah. But gotta... they are definitely... I reckon Edge is definitely faster, but it does have its moments. But, you know, yeah. so does Google Microsoft, 
Microsoft tells you it's faster, so it must be. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But you know what, though, it's a bit like it's it's a bit like you know. Look, there's my Google Chrome crashing again. I've just lost my Facebook <laughs> feed. This is the second time in in five minutes. Um, I was just going to say it's a bit like you know Apple and Samsung. There's people out there who are just you know naive to what they prefer and what they don't. And I can assure you that. Everybody out there that loves Apple, I can assure you at one point in, in time, they've all had a problem with their Apple phone, just the same as everybody out there has had a problem with their Samsung phone. And I think that the more people praise one product over another, the less you hear about the actual problems that do, mm. that do occur. So you can't tell me Google doesn't have problems with their browser from time to time. So oh, does Edge. No. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. It wouldn't be the they first time. They all do it. Yeah. That you know? wouldn't be the first time I've like... It's just that everybody's not willing to speak up about it because they're all they're all fighting for their favourite team, you know? I don't care who the who team I'm on. I just... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just want as to long think. as it ain't football. I just want it to work. That's right. Now, did you have a story or you want to... You've lost them. You just want to ch- chip in on uh, others. I'm, Chiping in at the moment because my browser just crashed again, so all I can't right. find my stories well, at you, all at the moment. You get yourself organised down there. I have to go back to Edge. No, oh. and we'll uh, I'll, I'll move on to this one. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we spoke about the Google was uh, told by the EU over there that they they weren't happy with Android being given away for free. Uh, that it was anti-competitive for some <laughs> weird reason. But anyway, so EU, EU, the European Union got its way. Uh, Google will charge now hardware firms up to $56.30 Australian per device to use its apps under a new licensing system to replace one that the the EU this year deemed anti-competitive. The new fee goes into effect on October 29, so that's, uh, you know, pretty soon. For any new smartphones or tablet models launched in the European economic area and running Google Android system. So I'm sure everyone's going to be jumping for joy to know that they're... Who gets the money, though? Well, Google, it's a licensing fee. So do like, they have to pay to the government or do they just scoop it all up and say thank you? Yeah, it's not it's not it's not a uh, a governmental on behalf of it it's they just had to charge it so they I guess so other people can come out with their own operating system. I don't know. I, I think the story behind that, Glenn, is that Google want to assure that uh, their their providers actually then up do updates with their phones, because a lot of a lot of a lot of um, people buy their operating system, or well, they get it for free actually, and then they don't do regular updates for two years or so, or three years. Hmm. So I believe now that there's some sort of a licensing thing now where they have to pay to get that, and uh, they have to also provide updates. So it's like okay. a verification guy type thing. Yeah. So it says the the Google will charge firms yet uh, per device. Uh, under a new licensing system to replace European Union, yeah, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, I, I read, did all that. So the fee can be as low as US $2.50 and rising, depending on the country and device size. You're going to see phones just flying all over the place, aren't you? You know, like, you know, if, if it's going to be a mess. Uh, it's, it's, it is standard across manufacturers with the majority likely to pay around 20 bucks. The European Commission in July found Google abused its market dominance in mobile software to essentially force Android partners to pre-install Search and Chrome on their gadgets. It levered a record $5 billion US dollar fine, uh, which Google has appealed. But that's what's all going on, yeah. Like, it's, yeah, being forced. Well, that's like my phone. My phone I got through Optus, and um, they're not doing any more updates on my phone. I know it's an older phone. It's an LG G3. And I think they stopped their updates at version 6. Now, I think version 6 is the last operating system that they support with the updates. When it goes, when they stop supporting version 6, then my phone won't get any updates anymore. Mm. But so I, that's what I think they're trying to avoid. They're trying to make sure that people at least have um, a regular update so that they can have the latest uh, bug fixes and, and any fill up any holes. Security. And, yeah, security breaches and stuff to get because otherwise people just use it and then they go away. I mean, you, you get some of these no-name um, brands sometimes do that. Like, yeah. like Xiaomi. Yeah, but I guess... Actually, no, it's, that, that's why um, I, I, I got sick. So I, I was a Samsung user years ago and they, 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 I was sick of them trying to controlling updates and that's why I went to uh, Google products with Nexus and I'd go, I'd go for a Pixel if I could afford it, but these Xiaomi's uh, represent such better value. Not that they're as good as a Pixel, 
but they represent great value. They're pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. But yeah, so I don't know. Like, just 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 imagine you have to pay an extra fifty bucks for your phone just because the you know the courts or the government told you this is what's going on. Like, I don't. I wouldn't be happy about that. Oh, no, know. not fifty bucks. Fifty bucks is a bit much. But if they they charge a few dollars for the operating system, then that'd be worth it. But phones have to stop updating sooner or later. Like you know, like when, when's the cutoff period though? You know, like how... yeah, but at the moment it's version six. Right. For who? For so, Android. And what's that, about three versions now behind? Yeah, so they're up to version 6. Pretty soon, I'll, I'm not sure when or if they're going to announce it, but they'll announce version 6 is no longer supported. You have to move on to version 7 or whatever the next version after that is. Yeah. And that's when that's when you'll find a lot of people. Like my phone, it's an LG G3. And it's not a new phone. It's about, what, four years old? Yeah. But that's got a 2.2 quad-core processor in it and three gigs of RAM, which is much better than some of these new phones you get today. So yeah. why... Why are they not updating that phone to at least the latest? So if they didn't update it and they told you that you know that phone's no longer supported, uh, but you could still you could still probably root it, couldn't you? And... Uh, what what I would do, I would I would root it and then I would install a aftermarket ROM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you could still breathe life into them <laughs> at the end of the day. And then so that, you know by rooting it to keep it going, are you are you uh, you know do you then create a device that is unsecure that will still work otherwise because if you if you didn't root it you'd probably just chuck the phone in the bin but now you've got a device that's now rooted is it sort of you know vulnerable to attacks um just you know there's a lot of questions isn't there but look i found that this yeah i I think it's hard to tell isn't it like i've done i've done uh rom rom changes on on lots of phones in the past and um upgraded them and if anything, it's probably better. You just got to be careful which ROM you go for mm. because um, the operating system is the newer version rather than the older version. I mean, the phone I'm getting, my phone at the moment still gets regular updates as far as your apps are concerned, but the core operating system doesn't. So okay. it stopped at six, right? Yeah, well, mine's, mine's at six at the moment, so they, won't, they haven't, I haven't received anything for the last year and a bit. And I'm pretty sure there would have been some updates. Yeah, how old's what that? The, what, what did the LG G3 start with? Um, geez, I think five or five point one. What year is that, Joe? That phone? Oh, I think it's 2014. It came out. Yep. Yeah, okay. So uh, you would have to expect. What would you expect to get out of the phone? You'd have to expect at least five years of updates. I, I would imagine. Well, that's true. But like I was saying, my phone when I bought it. It's, it, I bought it with, it's got a 2.2 quad core processor in it and mm. it's got three gigs of RAM, which is much better than most phones, well, not most, but much better than a lot of phones you buy today. So, so there'd be no reason why it just can't keep yeah, going. Keep I mean, going. you get these new phones, yeah. they've got version 8, version 9 running on them. Yeah, so you're probably right. Like, if you could root it, maybe and just put it like a, a, a responsible version 8 or 9 on, you'd be happy. That's yeah, right. I've, I've done that. There, there was the uh, Nexus 4, which was one before the 6. Oh, it was a few versions ago. It went through a substantial number of uh, OS upgrades, but the same as a PC, they, it eventually will get too slow and you you won't want it. And they've got to weigh up whether it's worth doing the updates, putting the effort in for the updates. Mm. Yeah, well, that's that's what I was saying. So what's what's when's a good time? Like, you know, Windows gives you 10 years or so, but what, when is a good time? Apple gives you less, I think. They sort of just cut three, you off. Three years, I reckon, is the life of it. Then they say that Windows 10 is faster than Windows 7. So, I think you want more than three years. I think you'd want five, at least. And then... Uh, for phone or computer? Oh, for a phone. I reckon. Five years. For, have a phone. for $300 for a phone, what do you think you're going to get out of that? Oh no, but maybe for one like Joe's got, he's got a, he's got a beauty. Like back when he yeah. bought it, it's probably worth a, a mozza. How much is it worth now? Well, it doesn't matter what's worth now. So how much he paid for it? I paid four hundred and fifty-five dollars for it back then, and it was, it was a, the equivalent of, um, or was it better than the the Samsung S five? I think around about the same period of time when the Samsung S five came out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think they can keep going. I, I reckon five years. That's and, you know, and if I'm going to get a new phone, I'm going to go and do a very similar thing again. I'll probably go for a, a 2.2 quad or 2.5, I think they've got these days, mm. quad core processor. And I'm going to go for six gigs or even eight gigs of RAM Ooh. with um, maybe 128 gigabyte uh, memory in it. So nice. they're, getting even, they're getting even bigger than that now, aren't they? 
yeah, so that would last me easily another four or five years. Mm. Yeah, nice, nice. All right, well, let's move on from phones. And I can tell you that old Linus Torvald has returned to head Linux coding community. And I think we uh, might have spoken about this a couple of weeks. He's, there's been a big blow up and he left. But anyway, he stepped back from heading the core development of Linux following accusations of bullying and rudeness. So he sought professional help. <laughs> I love how all this is just out in the open. So he's got professional help to curb his abrasive side and to develop empathy with the Linux community. What's the difference between the Linux community and the Apple community? You know, Steve Jobs. I was just, I was just thinking that. I know quite a few people that run around that are very abrupt yes. when, it comes, <laughs> when it comes to other um, forms of technology like Apple or Samsung. You know? I guess what the problem is here is, like, say, Steve Jobs, he was, he was paying people to uh, put up with his rudeness. But uh, Linux and, and uh, whatever, it's all done pretty much voluntary, isn't it? The coders are a, it's a voluntary community-based type of operating system. Uh, so, and I love it. Yeah, so he, he, he's, his return comes as Linux coders adopt a code of conduct that seeks to make the community more welcome. Before, oh, I bet you they had a code of conduct beforehand. Oh, I don't know. Who knows? It was a, it's a free voluntary community, but they've got probably have something anyway. Uh, before taking the the time off, Linus was known for giving forthright feedback, which is okay, uh, often in the form of expletive-filled emails. I uh, would have preferred for him to get on the phone and, and deliver those messages. <laughs> now, Mr. Torval said he doubted that he would ever be cuddly but could improve the way he handled people. He developed the first version of Linux operating system while studying at the University of Helsinki in Finland in 1991. And since then, the free OS has become hugely popular around the web and in many industries, which it has. There's a lot of stuff that is based on Linux, and a lot of that's why a lot of that stuff is free. It's, it's uh, great. Like, oh, I love it. Yeah, you asked Jordan there. He's, I'm what? streaming Facebook from it right now. There you go, and you've got, well, I've, you know, the and it's web not servers. My Google on the Linux that's crashed. It's the the Google on my Windows that's crashed. Yeah, like you know, Linux has been a it's probably been a slow road, hasn't it? Like I remember years ago, and it's probably changed a lot now. But or oh, maybe not. You know, you install your your Linux on your system, and then all your peripherals. You've got to go around thinking about drivers. But uh, not really. It's pretty good these days. Yeah, I noticed. And if you stick with the top flavors like Ubuntu or Linux Mint or. Mm. Something like that. They're generally pretty well. You go through the, you know, the well the today. printer drivers. You know, your your um, I don't know Epson's and HP's and whatever uh, brothers. They've all got Linux versions of the driver now, anyway. So that's pretty good. A lot of a lot of them don't. A lot of them do. Mm. And there's a lot of you know uh, third party ones that people write for them. So if they're, if they're not there, you know. Well, yeah, I just recently did an install with uh, Linux Mint, and that they installed everything without having to worry about. Uh, you know, worrying about drivers or anything, it works nice. perfectly. Yeah, it pick up your NVIDIA cards and all, yeah, all, everything. Nice. Yeah, yeah that's right. It did that. It picked up the NVIDIA card, picked up all the network ports, mm. uh, all the sound and everything. Not a problem. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's most prevalent in the in the web server industry, like our, our the ATH web hosting, that's Linux servers. You know, I remember once upon a time I took a, I think it was a, maybe an Ubuntu installation, possibly might have been a mint installation, I can't remember. But I petitioned a USB drive and installed it directly to the USB drive. Yeah, nice. So instead of using the normal hard drive to install Linux, mm. I installed it on an actual USB drive and then it was a portable operating system. Do you still use... Right. Well, you have to I'm going to plug it into any computer and boot it up. That's right. Just um, reboot Perfect. and then boot via the USB and away you've got your operating system. Yeah, and put all my own little tools on it and all that sort of stuff. A bit like... Um, some of these, you know, the live USBs you can get with all the tools and everything on them now, but kind of just make your own out of Linux. It's good. Uh, it's actually pretty good, good for diagnosing problems as well because it's got some tools for diagnosing problems with Windows. Hmm. Um, There's a Windows um, uh, portable operating system, I think, or used to be, where you could do you could have a Windows version on USB. Yeah, there's a yeah, Windows PE. Uh, XP, PE or whatever they yeah, call PE. it. I think, um, who was it? Um Oh, I can't say it now. There was a a, a CD you could download. It had Hiram. It. 
There's a Hiram tools. Hiram, they, that's it. Hiram tools. Used yeah, to come out with XP and geez, I still use that even with the XP. That's a great little CD, that. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I I came across that there's a now updated Windows 10 version of it. Uh, not as many tools it on really? it. Really. Yeah, not as many tools. I didn't quite like it as much as the XP version, uh, but you'll find the XP version. Oh, not it's not an XP version really. It, it's a it's a DOS version. It will load a mini XP, but sometimes the mini XP, the the GUI part of it, it won't load on the later machines. So you know you got to take your chances there. But there is a Windows Ten version. But let's um let's move on. Uh, There's another USB one I use as well that just allows you to put whatever ISOs you want onto it. It's like a multi boot. I can't remember the name, but it's a multi-boot USB. You can put all your all your installations for your Windows and your Linux operating systems and your tools and everything all on this one USB, and then you can just choose which one, whether you want G-parted or you want whatever else to boot up. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Try and remember okay. about that. I'll, I'll have a look at that. Um, all right, so let's go. Paul, what else have you got? Okay, so um, continuing on from uh, uh, the uh, other one about the uh, Google and... Um, the uh, camera that wasn't working. Um, I'm not bagging the uh, Google Pixel 3. I'm sure it's an awesome phone, but for the price you pay, you'd think these things would be sorted. Uh, mm. But anyway, this one, uh, Google Pixel Stand is a smart breed of wireless charger. Uh, in a world of increasingly co- complex tech, wireless chargers are, ref- are refreshingly simple devices. Just take your phone, drop it on a pad or stand and walk away. That's it. And now that wireless charging is basically is basically a standard feature for most flagship handsets. It's quickly becoming a preferred way to keep your phone battery topped up. But what if the wireless charger could do more than just excite electrons without the need for wires and cables? Exciting well, that's me. exactly what Google is trying to do with the new Pixel Stand. Right, yeah. and that's the stand there, $119. Yeah. Okay. Now, one of the issues I have with that um, it's a shame. Uh, currently, uh, reading through that, it's a pretty long article, that one. It's a huge one, actually. Um, they, they went on to uh, say that uh, if you're the only, uh, currently the only uh, stands that will charge at 10, watt, 10 watts, uh, 2 amps, is um, the Pixel 1. And they've, uh, the software is designed to only charge, even though it shows that it will charge rapidly, uh, it indicates a charge rapidly on third party, still only charges at five watts, which is a bit too slow for something with a battery that size. We're talking 3,000 milliamp hours. Mm. That, that'd take a while. And uh, they reckon once again, they're going to uh, open it up so third party will have access to 10 watt charging capabilities. But uh, that's exclusive once again. A uh, bit, bit of an Apple job, that one. Let's Let's make something exclusive and you have to buy our product. But that's not a long-term issue, uh, I believe. Jordan, you've got – don't you use Pixels? I've got a Pixel 1, yeah, just the first one. Oh, and you're about to upgrade your 3? No. No, I've actually decided not to upgrade. I'm, I, oh, okay. It's fine. I'm going to pay my bill for a little bit longer and get on get in front. I have. I feel no need to upgrade. It's Gee, okay. The phone is still perfect. Yep. Yeah, okay. Anyway, they've. Um, I just thought that was. There's a. I just kind of go to this next paragraph. It was uh, an interesting one. Um, it's been a bit buggy since I did the update. I must admit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to start, Google uh, took a 10 watt wireless charging stand, which is a bit faster than most wireless chargers, and then did what Google uh, does best: performed a bunch of. Uh, neat uh, software tricks and the result when docked the pixel stand transforms the pixel 3 into a mini smart speaker plus home hub and uh, potential for even more more in the future uh, so what's the go with these these uh, wireless charges then like do you have to have a special phone to like can you can I chuck any phone on a wireless charger mm-hmm. Okay, you have to. I've, I've, I started using uh, wireless charging. It's called Qi. That's that's uh, spelled Q-I. I uh, the first phone I had with that feature was the Google Nexus Four, which was a bit ahead of its time. Uh, Samsung had a few, but um, that sort of died a little bit uh, for a few years because the power requirements uh, they just weren't powerful enough at half a half an amp to uh, charge in a decent period of time. 
and uh, and they improved USB sockets. They went to USB C, which is uh, can be inserted and removed many more times than micro USB. So the need for wireless went away for a while, but now uh, the people are wanting it. Oh, and the other issue with wireless, usually you can't get a wireless um, feature in a phone which is made of metal because right. wireless won't transmit through metal. So basically... you'll find uh, glass phones or ceramic phones. Uh, the reason they're made of that is so they can charge wirelessly. Right, so that basically you've got to have a, a, a certain phone. You can't just buy, you can't just chuck your old uh, Galaxy S2 on there and expect it to charge. No, no it has to be uh, wireless compatible, or, or you can buy adapters for them, but they're a bit of a joke. And yeah, yeah. You either buy it. The, the Pixel will handle it well, um, uh, and Apple's, I think, uh, got their finger in the pie there as well. Pixel One doesn't do it. You said though, did, did you? No, no. Yeah. Pixel One, they didn't do it. Pixel Two. I, don't, I think Pixel 3 was the first uh, one which had Qi wireless charging. Mm, okay. All right. Cool. Still a great phone. Yeah. Um, Joe. I mean, really, the benefit of wireless charging is just the ease, ease of access, isn't it? Easy charging. So, oh, yeah. well, And you're not going to wear your socket out like you. Remember the old days when you get the real sloppy micro USB socket, which Joe could probably attest to with a 15-year-old phone or whatever it is? <laughs> yeah, they get uh, only four. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, four. You got a uh, sloppy... Actually, Actually, this four-year-old phone does come with a wireless charger on it, and I never, and, and, and I never used it, not because uh, it wasn't convenient or anything, but as you said, the power, the chargers weren't powerful enough. No, it's too I slow. I don't use the wireless charging part on it, but it does still have it, and it has. Um, actually, the strange thing was is that I never I never bought it at the time. The LG G3 came with a stand, much like the Pixel does. Um, with its own char- um, wireless charging on it. And, and I think back then it was like 80 or $90 to buy this thing, and I didn't buy it. So I went and bought one of these Chinese no-name brand ones for about 15 and it just wouldn't do it. It, it was hard to find the, the sweet spot on the charger to get it to charge. Yeah, yeah so, well, on, on that, I actually I've, – I've, I've done a lot of uh, – dealt with a lot of wireless uh, – uh, technology and those flat ones that sit flat and you put your phone on top you bump your phone and it's going off charge quite easily and that's a pain in the butt and that's why the stands are the way to go with wireless charging and i, I bought this as a brand the brand was kk moon some cheap chinese one but the beauty of a stand locates your phone exactly where you need it to go and um they work very well but still the uh, same old case half of what charging takes you nine or ten hours to charge a 2500 milliamp hour battery that's mm. too oh, long in today's day and age there's there's the i'm not sure if you can see that but there's my flat one that you were talking about it was a yeah. flat one and it did work but you had to get it in the right spot for it to be charged and if yeah, yeah sure if you moved it just a little bit or if, it, if you had it on vibrate and if my phone went off it would it would lose its speed spot and you have to start all over again. Mm. Yeah. So if you ever go wireless, go a stand. And that's why Pixel has gone to stand and they didn't go for a charging pad like Samsung and LG and all the others did. So stands are the way to go, and I wouldn't go past the stand. I have to It'd remember break. that next time. Yeah. Thanks for that, Paul. Mm. Yeah. KK, KK Moon is um, the, the cheaper Chinese one, but it's still five watt charging, and it phones are just getting bigger, like 300 milliamp hours. You're probably looking at 10 hours to fully charge. Well, you only sleep for, uh, I don't know how long you sleep, for six hours. Three. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's um, yeah, let's move off phones. I think we've, we've had a, a few phone stories this week. But let's, yeah. uh, Joe, what, what, what do you got? You got Not something... much else in the news these days, Glenn, don't reckon. Yeah, I know. Uh, what, well, you what, know, you know, you know how we were talking about browsers before, you know. Well, Mozilla now, Mozilla Firefox has teamed up with a company called Proton VPN. Um, what they've done is that they've teamed up to provide VPN services, which is virtual private network services, to people who use Firefox browser. Right. That's yeah. a pretty awesome feature. Yeah. So for some Firefox users, um, they will see ads on a VPN service, um, which um, allows them to encrypt data and routes them through a secure server. There's a small group um, in the US um, uh, who are using Firefox who will see a $10 per month offer of a subscription to the Proton VPN service, which is basically a Swiss VPN provider. Mozilla selected this particular firm because it strictly uh, 
because of its strict private policy and because it doesn't log any user data. Okay. They say that they also have a track record of fighting for online privacy and are dedicated to internet safety and security. Mm. Just uh, the videos out there on the net, I don't know if you've seen them, there's people demonstrate how a VPN works and what happens to your internet when you use a VPN. And just to explain it really quickly, uh, so without a VPN, say you've got, say, uh, you know, you've, you've got all these connections going out to the internet, you know, just like, I don't know, like, I don't know, spiders up a wall, say, you know, just all these connections. They're just all going out. They're going everywhere, you know, Microsoft, Apple, Google, blah, blah, blah. They're all going everywhere. Uh, you turn your VPN on and you got one. Just goes out like that, just one. And that's why uh, they're good because then the ISP or whoever might be snooping on you, they can only see one thing go out and not knowing what's in that thing. When it hits its destination, that's when it starts spreading around. And that's well, for, the, well, for the technical for the technical term, it's just basically another network. You're just hopping into someone else's network and using their IP, using their IP, and then they're then in charge of giving you internet access. So hmm. a bit like uh, a bit like any VPN, like PIA or any of those. Yeah. You know? And then you've got like I mean, my kids. I've just installed an app called Kids Locks that automatically switches on a VPN in in the um, in the iPhone. And then it locks the kids into a into a network that's been filtered by you know all their big server filters and everything, and filters out all the porn and all those things, and they get left with just safe websites on that network. So a VPN is basically just logging into a safer network. So Jordan, that's, so that's Jordan, not does that particular network work on the whole phone or just particular things? No, on- it's the whole. It just locks out the whole phone. The whole phone. Okay, because this particular one here I'm talking about that's going through Mozilla Firefox, is just their browser, right? So that's what they're using on their browser. Well, I think um, Kaspersky's, um, uh, Kaspersky's uh, Safe Kids, whatever it's called, works on PC as well as phones. Kid lo- Kids Locks doesn't. But that's basically how they operate. They just put you through a VPN. They force the computer's connection to go through the VPN. So does it say this 10 bucks a month to use this? Uh, is this just for the Firefox? Like just from Firefox at the moment, yes. Yeah, right. Because my VPN, I do use one uh, uh, every now and then when I need to. Like I've got, it loads up all the time, and if I need to, I mainly use it to go out and say view a web page that I might have done an update to, or you know, just try and circumvent some DNS caching issues that I might have. Uh, and I think I'm with the PIA, the Private Internet Access. That's and, what uh, I said before. Yeah, mm. it's about sixty dollars a year, something like that. And yeah, I can use I've. Put on the PC. They don't, they're not going to filter out pornography or anything like that, though. No, no, they don't filter. They won't filter anything out. They're just hiding That's... your IP or keeping you more secure. So you, yeah, they're d- different yeah. purposes. Yeah, yeah. You know, this, this one is using the Proton VPN, which is going out through um, uh, the Swiss um, servers up at, uh, in Switzerland. I'm guessing. So you're going from say you're here in Australia, or you you you, you turn this thing on and you go straight out through Switzerland. Yeah, right. Yeah, and then the, all their servers that in their, their company do all the filtering or whatever it is that their service offers, whether it be filtering or hiding your IP or whatever, is all done on their network. So the moment you become part of their network, you get their their bubble of protection. Mm. Yeah, okay, right, right, right. Um, cool. So virtual private networking is what VPN stands for, for those that may not know. I'm sure that most people out there who are tech heads would know what a VPN is. Yeah, but like even with that that PIA, I can I can chuck it on. It's on my Kodi. Uh, it's uh, you can use it on numerous devices. Um, yeah, well, if yeah, you connect your you know your PIA up and then you do a you go on a Google and you go, what is my IP address? You'll see it's changed. That's right, yeah, yeah. And then you can disconnect and then reconnect in another country and it's changed again. So all of a sudden your mm. location has changed. Yeah. So uh, they've, got, they've got different purposes though. This one that uh, Joe's talking about, y- Yeah. It, it does filtering, not just VPN. Yeah. That's right. Is that right, Joe? Yeah. That's, it yeah. helps. Um, to do the filtering, you've got to be on their VPN. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, with the one Glenn's talking about, it's only VPN. They don't do filtering. No, no, no. That's just that we just said that it's for hiding your IP or whatever you want to use it for. So yeah, they're, not, I, they're I would, not comparisons. I would much prefer to have some sort of VPN uh, related directly onto my router, so it doesn't matter what goes through it. Um, I'm not sure if that sort of thing is available or not. Well, it is. I think uh, PIA offer that. 
Don't uh, they, Glenn? I think Trend, they... Trend Micro offer a special box, I think, which has called Trend Micro Security. It's it's an actual hardware box which might be VPN. I know it's got filtering. I think it might do VPN as well. Yeah, you know that PF Sense you can do filtering like that. You can set up your own VPN and everything. But if you want your VPN to be on a different IP, then it needs to be in another location. If you're going to do it at home, then you're not. You may as well just lock yourself up. Would, wouldn't yeah. the using the changing the DNS settings pretty pretty much similar to this as well? Like, couldn't you just go ahead and change your DNS settings to something like eight point eight point eight point eight or something well, like that's, that? I don't know if that necessarily puts you on another network, but it certainly it, it receives its uh, it receives its information from those. Other so, servers. Yeah, so what the eights do, uh, that's the Google DNS servers. So what happens is, uh, so Telstra might be something else. Say, I don't know, for example, say it's 22222. Two, 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 two. Um, so what happens is then the when you request to look up, say, nab.com.au, uh, if you've got 888 as your DNS server, well, Google, you will go to the Google DNS server and then Google will go, oh, NAB lives over here. You go over there. And if you're with, if you've got your DNS server with Telstra, then you go nab.com.au. You go to the NAB DNS server and he goes, oh, NAB's over there. And uh, so and that, if you were to yeah. go on a VPN, then they would have their own DNSs. Well, no, you could st- still stay as 888, but whatever comes out of your machine. It's just all coming out as a, as a, at a different. So it'll go over to Switzerland first. Yeah, yeah. It'll still you can still use their DNSs, but yeah, or, or theirs or yours or whatever. Yeah. But you're right, Joe. Like you can get those VPNs where uh, you can they they do operate like that. They they will let you use a a, a, a DNS server, and then it'll be it must verify you somehow. But if you put those settings into the router, then anything at all that comes out of your place that goes out of that router is all in one one pipe that's right yeah that's what i was trying to get at yeah. and at least at that point there you don't even have to get charged ten dollars a month but there's no filtering anything it's just taking a different road to get somewhere that's all so there's no filtering on that one you said no no but yeah that's right there's no filtering on a traditional vpn but the one with the mike mozilla firefox it's filtering so it's like yeah, a, well, i thought that you just said there's no filter on the firefox one no no not no. as far as i'm aware oh, so okay. it's just a vpn oh. Just a VPN. Right. Oh, sorry, I thought there was filtering. Why well, well, wouldn't pay 10 bucks for that? Yeah, why would you pay 10 bucks just to have VPN with Firefox? Well, it's because on the other end, um, the provider, which is um, Proton VPN, they've known for security and for safety. So they so want there is private. Them. There is private browsing and filtering going on then. Sure, but you can you can create, let's say you can create a, a VPN to say your service provider or to some somebody else. And go through their VPN service, but then on the other end, you don't know whether they're going to, you know, keep your information or relay it. Yeah, or... I think PIA's got a pretty good track record too. There's a few of those around. That I think there's is there Nord, Nord or something like that. There's a few. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, so yeah, but anyway, like if you want to follow that up, that's uh, all these stories are in the show notes, so you can. But I wouldn't do home filtering. Sorry, to cut you off, Glenn. I wouldn't do home filtering. If you want to buy a VPN for filtering, go and buy one from a filtering company that, that provide filtering for your internet, for your kids or whatever, because it's just too much. Like, I mean, I've tried filtering my own, having my own VPN and filtering out all the porn through PF Sense or, or whatever else. And it's just never ending. It's yeah. the, other, the other bad thing about this. There's billions of sites out there to block. You may as well get a company that's already got that established. Yeah. The other thing as well with this um, Firefox is that if you open up a, a Chrome or a Edge browser, it doesn't work, you know. It just goes works only works by the by Fox browser. Mm. All right. So just to um, try and put this one to bed, uh, it's uh, it, we've got here the service sold to Firefox users will be identical to the Proton VPN Plus plan. Now the Voton V the Proton VPN Plus plan uh, that will give you the access to all countries, five devices, all advanced security features included. Uh, what else does it say? That's that's all it says. That's not much. Uh, get plus. What's else in there? I'll oh, go back. I did have a few more on the page before. Uh, sp- high speed uh, P2P plus servers, secure core Tor servers, secure streaming, and normally yeah. that's uh, ninety six bucks a year. So what are they? Ten. That's one hundred and twenty bucks. That's dearer. <laughs> that's dearer to buy through yeah, that's Firefox. Because, uh, that's because Firefox take their cut. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, oh. 
There's me phone. All right, so let's move on. But uh, if you bring up uh, PIA in comparison, they'll probably have a lot more features than that, wouldn't they? I'd reckon. Yeah, well, PIA is easy to use. Like I can, uh, from on my desktop, I just right click, choose the country I want, and then bang, just two seconds it connects and it's done. So it's nice and easy. Um, PIA is pretty well known. As I said, there's a Kodi app for it. If you're on the Kodi, uh, I can put it into my. There's a Android app, and I'm sure there's an iPhone app and go for gold but uh paul tell us tell us the woes of the windows 10 update saga windows 10 yeah i've um i'm pretty passionate on this uh, i can tell by the t-shirt you're wearing yeah (laughs) uh windows 10 updates mind you this is a negative probably more of a negative thing than is positive the uh, windows 10 october 2018 update continues to frustrate users with another bug Windows 10 2018 update has continued to frustrate Microsoft fans with another bug that appears to... Have you ever had the experience of digging through your email or file oh. folders for the document you know you wrote oh. but just can't find? No. T- Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those... Oh, that's it. So I should have warned you that sort. I didn't know that you were using helium gas tonight, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that, was that was that site that just just don't you hate those sites that just play ads? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I have it all the time. The audio tabs. Yeah, and then you open the same website five times. Yeah, I don't think I can even. I can't even uh, look. Here's that. Here's the site. Was it express Have you ever had the experience of digging off. through your right. email or file oh, folders for the document you know you wrote no, but just can't find? No. no Timeline no, can no. help you get back this wasted time. Well, With Timeline, your Windows 10 piece. So can you get out of it now? Forget about it, Forget about it mate. What, were you, what were you saying, Paul? Let's go. Okay, it, let me to continue. I turned it off in the tab. That's all right. I'm on it. Okay. It appears uh, Microsoft fans running Windows 10 uh, October 18 uh, updates may have discovered another bug uh, there. Uh, Windows 10 October updates were initially released by Microsoft during the Surface Hardware event on October 2nd. However, it was soon pulled after a number of users reported a few uh, reported the new operating system version was deleting precious files unexpectedly. This has been mentioned uh, last week or week before in uh, ATH. Uh, With this, I'm sure they'll fix it in time, but I, I read... Uh, probably not in this article, another one, but one of the reasons they released this update uh, with these bugs in is because they wanted to uh, get it out at the same time that they released the Microsoft Surface. Hmm. And this is a consequence of not doing uh, te- uh, testing beforehand. And that's pretty obvious in my opinion. What was that released? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to search for something here. Um, yeah, there was something about. Uh, let me see if I can get something. There was some Microsoft product 2019 server or something. Yeah, uh, that's that they. They um, I think they're depreciating. Uh, oh, that's right. That in here, my Microsoft. Uh, I don't deal in the server space, but I read that they're um, the software must be the CALs they're using or something like that is updating data, but the OS. Yeah, so the one I was thinking about uh, is this one here. The Microsoft releases an undeployable Exchange Server 2019. So they've got problems all over the show. Uh, Microsoft has launched its Exchange Server uh, 2019 communication contacts and calendaring flagship despite the required Windows Server 2019 still being unavailable, leaving customers unable to test and deploy the software. So Server 2019 version 1809 was pulled uh, earlier this month, along with the test stop Windows 10 version, so it's all going wrong. <laughs> and and yeah. such an Adela's on 28 million a year might have to uh, review his performance. Yes. <laughs> yeah, if it's I'm not keen, working, I'm, you certainly want to use it. So on that, as some of you already know, I'm a big advocate on suppressing updates as best you can. Very difficult to do sometimes. Suppress updates, wait till all the dust settles, and then on a uh, scheduled. Uh, uh, on a schedule, then roll those updates in a controlled environment. And some people are paying the price for um, accepting automatic. Look, there was apparently with that update, that 1809 blunder, apparently there was some way that Microsoft, they were asking you to immediately contact them and they would log in and, and I think it was quite successful to uh, you'd get the data back. 
But, I heard um, that that is not the case for everyone, no. Well, Which, no. They, they've done like three fixes, I think. Depends on who was backed up to uh, one drive without their knowledge. No, I think, it, yeah, it was all, all about, I, you know, you undelete files. That's, you know, pretty simple these days. It's the and, setting in OneDrive now backs your whole computer up if you don't tell it not to. Oh, it does it? Mm-hmm. Is that you where all my, that. Is that where all my bandwidth's going? You, you open up OneDrive and it's backed up all your documents and everything to OneDrive and you didn't even ask it to. That's probably why I can't have any bandwidth to stream Facebook. There's a, there's a, a tick box that mm-hmm. says, a select box that says, only keep on my computer or let it go to thing when you install it or when right. you agree to it. All right, let's finish up with, uh, I think, Joe, is that yours with the smoke alarms? Who's yes. It? Yeah, what? apparently there's um, smart smoke alarms. People who are not aware that you can get smart smoke alarms. These devices are essential um, every day uh, homes. Um, if you haven't got one, you should consider, and I'll tell you why. Um, normally, we get smoke alarms and uh, we install them and then we forget them until we hear the low battery warning that says that, hey, it's time to change the batteries. But these um, new smart alarms monitor themselves and ensure that you don't run out of battery when you need it most. They also keep you up to date with alerts right to your phone. Even if you aren't home, you'll know if there's something wrong the moment it happens. I think in Queensland, I think the uh, electrical ones are mandatory. And I think also, not only do you have to have the electrical ones, like, you know, hardwired smoke alarms, but I think you also have to have them linked. So if that's one right. goes off... That's right. Yeah, yeah, you do, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Even here in Sydney, in New South Wales, you have to have them. Every new dwelling that goes up, new, new um, building, new home, new unit, whatever, must have uh, alarms and they should be um, yeah, wired in. Yes. But what I'm saying is that why not grab the smart ones? Mm. Um these ones here um, are available um, to connect to your Wi-Fi system via either an Android or an Apple device. Um, they can but if you have a big fire and the internet gets cut off, you won't know that they're going off. <laughs> no, well, what you could have, they could go, go back to the server and basically when they lose a ping, they just have a constant uh, ping. And when they lose the polling, I think they call it, when uh, it's not detected there, then it sends a message to say your house has gone offline. Hmm. That's right. Well, that's all right. I'm just reading. Well, I don't want to. I don't want, want to uh, read. It's all the negatives tonight, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think. Uh, look. Uh, look. I had. I thought about these uh, a little while ago. I thought, oh, would it be good to put a, you know, like IoT in a smoke alarm? And then I found out that Google had already done. It. I went, don't. There goes that idea. But um, you know, like you could have these smoke alarms. They could either ring your phone. So if you're out and about. You know, have it go into a party. You go, oh, look at that. My house is burning down. But not only that, it, but you could also... <laughs> it would be just very casual. It would be very casual, wouldn't it? If you if it came through on your phone like that, Glenn, you'd be like, oh, yeah, my house is burned down. We, my beer gone? <laughs> yeah, we'd well, be able to turn on the Ring app and watch it. So, you know, the Ring doorbell. <laughs> just, just don't forget to, you know... F- uh, Facebook Live while you're at it, you know? Yeah, but so what I was saying is that it can do, say, ping your phone, ring on your phone, but also for the elderly, like, you know, you could have it ring someone else's phone or, or a couple of people's phone, and so therefore, you know, old old grandma, she's she's not doing too good. The phone the phone alarm's gone off. The smoke alarm's gone off. I can't get her on the phone. I better get around there. So it's all good. All these IT things are great. Uh, well, there's one I heard of the other day that can tell if someone falls over. Hmm. And it messages, messages or notifies you. Well, the Apple you Watch would be able to probably do that. The older person yeah, pulls smoke over. Alarm. The smoke alarm tells you, no notifies. It can tell you fell over. No, no, no. I'm saying there was another IoT or device oh. that I'd heard of. Yeah. yeah. No, I heard read it. in an article somewhere, I can't remember, it was a few weeks ago, where it was able to monitor if a person fell over. And they were like, this is going to be great in the, uh, you know, the old people's homes where if that happens and no one knows and they get left lying on the floor, you know, so you right. can get notification saying they fell over. All right. Uh, continue, please, Joe. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, Glenn. Um, yeah. So there's a few different ones around that you can get if you're um, wanting to buy one. For example, there's one called the Nest Protect Smart Alarm, which is owned by Google. Its design includes some sort of multicolored indicator ring on top of it. Um, the Nest Protect is powered by either uh, six batteries um, that are double A size or it's wired directly into your mains. Uh, the batteries should last about five years right. and Google recommends that you should replace it after 10. 
The yeah. other one is what's um, what's branded as uh, Neta Netamo. Mm. I think that's how you say it. Ne Netamo smoke ne alarm. Netatmo? It comes with an integrated LED light and has an automatic self check system. It also comes with a built in battery, which ensures it lasts about 10 years. So the batteries in this particular one aren't mm. replaceable. They just comes with one battery, which lasts 10 years. And so when the battery has gone, you got to toss it out and get another one. Mm. Yeah. So there's also some, some other little bits and things, bits and pieces you can do with, with these smart alarms. Um, you know, things like, um, if, if you've got a, an app called IFTTT, which stands for If This Then That, um, you, can, you can program the smart alarm to um, be flexible with um, some sort of things like, you know, connect to your hue lights. So when the alarm goes off, it flashes red lights all over the house and stuff like mm. that. So That's a good little thing that uh, IFT, I, think, I don't know if you pronounce it like that. Yeah. But I don't know yeah. if you guys use it. Anyone use that? I'd it. like my I'd like all my my lights to flash red if Glenn comes over. Yeah, why red? If, and then it tells me Glenn's <laughs> knocking at the door and all the alarms <laughs> lights go. They're red. That'd be good. Well, you can get yourself a um, curious you color red. A Google Nest um, doorbell, and that has particular that particular doorbell has facial recognitions, and you can actually set that up in such a way that if uh, Glenn does approach your doorbell, it says. Well, first of all, Google Home will say, hey, uh, Jordan, uh, Glenn's at the door. And then you can program it to, to flash red lights all over the place. Yeah, that's good. Then, you, then you'd program it to turn the lights off and, it's wouldn't, and pretend you're not home. It wouldn't be red lights to, to say an emergency that Glenn's here. It'd be just as a warning because he's come so far. And I'd better go out of my way to be hospitable. There's better be cold beer in the fridge. <laughs> yeah, hey, just had one uh, question about that, uh, uh, Joe. With, with, I wonder if these smoke alarms would meet the certification you're building your house, could you install these in place of whatever a conventional smoke alarm is if they're certified? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. They are yep. certified alarms, yes. They so, have to be. Mm. Oh, okay, so, yeah, so it's the same as uh, what you have in a house, but just got more features. Yeah, basically it's the same as what you have in a house, but it's got the, the, the features that it, it can talk to your phone via an app. You can actually... Um, get like a, an indicator on your phone saying that the battery's flat. I mean, these are good things. Think of it. Think outside the square a little bit. Say you, you're, you know, your, your your parents or your grandparents. They don't know much about these sort of things. So what you do is you set one of these up in their home, assuming they have Wi-Fi, of course. There are others that are available that I've been looking into myself that actually run on 3G. So I can get a little 3G SIM card and put it in there as well. But um, think of it as if if it goes off in somebody's house. They might be asleep, like you might be at the grandparents' place or something. They might be asleep, and, or they, they're not able. Someone's, you know, in bed sick and they can't get out. There, there's more than one good reason to have these things. Hmm. I think they're brilliant. Well, I don't yeah. have them, but I think I, I like them. I like them a lot. Well, Ray was just saying on um, saying on Facebook there that it was the Apple Watch that detects the falls. The Apple Watch Four. I knew I'd read it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Apple Watch Four de detects when you fall over. Mm. It's better than wearing one of those things around your neck. One of the vital, yeah. vital lifes, whatever they were. It'd be pretty bad, though, if you went down the pub and you'd had a few. And your watch would be telling you to stop falling over, wouldn't it? And the, the ambulance would arrive. <laughs> Who's falling <laughs> over? Who's falling over? Um, all right. Well, I think that's, uh, that's about it, isn't it? Has anyone got any more to talk about? I think that's about oh, it. Oh, I had a little article about nothing big because I'm not going to try and find it now, so I'll just touch base on it. But it was about um, Apple going back to phones, it was about Apple and Samsung both got fined. I think um, Samsung and Apple both got fined $5 million each and or something like that. And and then I think Apple got fined an extra $5 million as well for not being honest about no, it's for, for slowing, slowing, slowing down the phones for, with, with uh, updates to make mm. people uh, buy new phones. So Apple being fined €10 million Euros and Samsung $5 million. So Apple must have been doing doubly bad. But Apple got fined the extra five million because they they actually did it without telling anyone or weren't honest about it or something or was more more deceitful about it or something. Mm. And then yeah, Sam right. and then yeah. Samsung weren't, so they and and they haven't had problems with their updates before or anything like that. So they kind of got a little bit less picked on, but Apple copped it. I think Apple sorted that out, haven't they? They've got a 
little switch or something now on the phone to say, well, don't shut down if I get overworked? Yeah, well, I suppose they probably had to put that in or their fine might have been 20 million. Hmm. Probably did everything they could to try and keep them happy to make it look like they were doing their best to get out of it. But we've all known for years that these companies are doing this. They're slowing us down intentionally to buy, so we buy new products. I mean, yeah. Microsoft you know. did it with Vista. Well, that's, that's right, because even, even Apple now is actually still got that offer on for people who got the old uh, 6 and 6S, 7 or even 8 iPhone. That offer is still available until uh, the end of the year, December, the end mm-hmm. of the year, to change your battery. Oh, yes, yep. yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. right so, so, you, yeah, so that's good. You got, that's good if you got something idea. earlier than a 7, did you say? A yeah. 6, I think, yeah. Yeah, because the only way you're going to, even though they have the new software update that allows you to turn that on and off um, to save battery or to use um, the full speed or whatever it is that you want to do with it, even though you have that new update, it doesn't actually register in the phone unless you change the battery in it. So therefore, you've got to change the battery first. And then once you change the battery, then you can update to, to that app that, or that, that part of the app. That app to will get does, that feature. To mm-hmm. get that feature. And then it works properly. Because otherwise, yeah, if right. you don't do it, then it doesn't work properly. Yeah, right. All right. Good stuff. So uh, thanks, everyone. Well, I see that Eric's on Facebook tonight. He's a huge, huge Mac fan. So Huge. You wouldn't believe huge. it. Huge, he'll, know, just... he'll know all about it. <laughs> now, uh, you can join us on <laughs> facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Edge, youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Edge. Show notes are at theaussietechedge.com.au forward slash podcast. Uh, listen to the other shows, the Aussie Mac Zone, My Tech Opinion, Aussie Tech Crypto. And uh, thanks for everyone that listens around the world. Uh, there's people just, not in, I wouldn't say every country, but a lot of countries. You know, I look up the list and I go, Ooh, where? Where's that? So I have to go and look it up on my big map. Uh, yeah, so thanks everyone for doing that. Thanks, uh, Paul. Good to see you again. No worries. And where where and are you from? What, worldwide Computers or somewhere? <laughs> Entire Computer Services. Uh, Same. We do have a, say, a simple website. It's uh, just search up Entire Computer Services and uh, you'll find it. And you're, yeah, you, you, you um, operate around the Toowoomba area? In Toowoomba, yes. How's yes, that? Toowoomba and surrounds. We'll travel if needed. How's that storm going? I, I think it's, yeah, it's all gone. looks black outside. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Glenn uh, Ray says on Facebook that he enjoyed an interview with you on My Tech Opinion. Oh, yeah, cool. What Good. was that about? Uh, yeah, um, Shane. ATH. I, I watched, I, I listened to that. It was good. Oh, I yeah, didn't thanks. watch it. No, I don't, was it video? I can't remember. Probably. No, it was audio. There might have been a video version. I can't. Anyway, oh. I did a um, yeah. The, I did the boys over there, Shane and and uh, Phil wanted to in the interview me, so I said, yeah, why not? I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's good. Uh, my take opinion. I don't know what uh, version, what episode that was, but it'll be in the iTunes. Just go through it. I'm sure you'll find it. Uh, yeah, cool. Uh, good on you, Jordan. Thanks for coming in. No worries. Thanks for looking after the Facebook feed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Good to see you again. No worries. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for coming in. Where, where's your website or where's your Facebook page or YouTube page? Yeah, we've got uh, Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash Joe the Gadget Man. And you got, you got a YouTube? I have a YouTube, Joe the Gadget Man.com forward slash YouTube. How's... Have you got 100, 100 likes yet? I don't have 100 likes yet. I've still got to hit 100 likes. Come on, guys. Even though, even though Glenn's offering his. Even Joe though Glenn's Joe offering his date for the hundredth. That's right. It still hasn't happened. Come I on, don't guys. Know. Help I us know. out. Go to joethegadgetsman.com forward slash YouTube and hit a like for me. And have a beer with Glenn for the hundredth one. You you could do that for you could do that for our Joe. Come on. What about what about the, the, the new guys, the new listeners over in the Sheffield College? Go to Joe the Gadget Joe the Gadgets forward slash YouTube. <laughs> YouTube, that's it. Yeah, cool. All right. If you can't do it, Go to the Facebook page. Uh, so, all right, that's it. We better get out of here. We've gone way over time. Long show for, for a show that had no stories. Okay. Four, four people, there's your problem. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, everyone. We'll see, yeah. we'll see you all next time. So, have a good week. And uh, sharks still will. Bye-bye. <laughs> Catch you later. See ya. Bye. See ya.